even as blood flowed in the alleys of Flea Bottom after the brutal death of Prince Joffrey. Another battle raged around the Dragon Pit atop the Hill of Rainies, an event that would forever change the history of the Seven Kingdoms. The Queen's fall, Mushroom, was not wrong. Swarms of starving rats can indeed bring down bulls and bears when there are enough of them, and in this case, there were many. No matter how many the bull or the bear might kill, there are always more biting at the great beast's legs, clinging to its belly, running up its back, as so it was that night. The shepherd's rats were armed with spears, long axes, spiked clubs, and half a hundred other kinds of weapons, including longbows and crossbows. The gold cloaks, stationed at the dragon gate, obedient to their queen's command, marched forth from their barracks to defend the hill, but they found themselves unable to cut through the mobs and turned back, whilst the messenger sent to the old gate never arrived. The dragon pit had its own contingent of guard, the dragon keepers. But those proud warriors were only 77 in number, and fewer than 50 had the watch that night. Though their swords drank deep in the blood of the attackers, their numbers were against them. When the shepherd's lambs smashed through the doors of the towering main gate sheathed in bronze and iron were too strong to assault, but the building had a score of lesser entrances and came clambering through the windows. The dragon keepers were overwhelmed and soon slaughtered. Maybe the attackers hoped to take the dragons whilst they slept but the noise of their assault had made that impossible. Those who lived to tell speak of shouts and screams, the smell of blood in the air, the splintering of oak and iron doors beneath crude rams and blows of countless axes. Seldom have so many men rushed so eagerly onto their funeral pyres, Grand Mason Monkey wrote, but a madness was upon them. There were four dragons housed within the dragon pit that day. By the time the first of the attackers came pouring onto the sands, all four were roused awake and angry. No two chroniclers agree on how many men and women died that night beneath the dragon pit's great dome. 200 or 2,000, be that as it may. For every man who perished, 10 had suffered burns and yet survived. Trapped within the pit, hemmed in by the walls and dome and bound by heavy chains, the dragons could not fly away or use their wings to evade the attacks and swoop down upon their foes. Instead, they fought with horns and teeth and claws. The dragon pit was transformed into a fiery hell where burning men staggered screaming through the smoke, the flesh falling from their blackened bones. But for every man who died, ten more appeared to take their place, shouting that the dragons must need die. One by one, they did. Shyrox was the first to succumb, slain by a woodsman known as Hob the Hewer, who leapt onto her neck, driving his axe down into the beast's skull as Shyrox roared and twisted, trying to throw him off. Seven blows did Hob deliver with his legs locked around the dragon's neck, and each time his axe came down, he roared out the name of one of the seven. It was the seventh blow, the stranger's blow, that slew the dragon, crushing through the scales and bone into the beast's brain. That's if Eustace is to believe believe. Morgul, it is written, was slain by a burning knight, a huge brute of a man in heavy armour, who rushed headlong into dragon's flames with a spear in hand, thrusting its point into the beast's eye repeatedly, even as dragon flame melted the steel plate that encased him and devoured the flesh with him. Prince Joffrey's Tyrax retreated back into his lair, we are told, roasting so many would-be dragon slayers as they rushed after him that his entrance was soon made impassable by their corpses. But it must be recalled that each of these man-made caves had two entrances, one fronting onto the sands of the pit, the other opening onto the hillside. It was the shepherd himself who directed his followers to break through the back door, and hundreds did, howling through the smoke with swords, spears and axes. As Tyrax turned, his chains fouled, entangling him in a web of steel that fatally limited his movement. Half a dozen men and one woman would later claim to have dealt the dragon the mortal blow. Like his master, Prince Joffrey, Tyrax suffered further indignity in death as the shepherd's followers sliced the membranes from his wings and tore them into ragged strips to fashion dragon skin cloaks. The last of the four dragons in the pit did not die so easily. Legend has it Dreamfire had broken free of two of her chains at the Queen Helena's death. The remaining bonds she burst now, tearing the stanchions from the walls as the mob rushed her, then plunging into them with tooth and claw, ripping men apart and tearing off their limbs, even as she loosed her terrible fire. As others closed about, she took wing, circling the cavernous interior of the dragon pit and swooping down to attack the men below. Tyrax, Shorox and Morgul killed scores. There can be little doubt, but Dreamfire slew more than all three of them combined. 
Hundreds fled in terror from her flames, but hundreds more, drunk or mad or possessed of the warrior's own courage, pushed through the attack. Even at the apex of the dome, dragon within easy reach of the archers and crossbowmen, and arrows and quarrels flew at dreamfire wherever she went. At such close range, some of the few even punched through her scales. Whenever she lingered, men swarmed to attack, driving her back into the air. Twice, the dragon flew at the dragon pit's bronze gate, only to find it closed and barred and defended by ranks of spears. Unable to flee, Dreamfire returned the attack, savaging her tormentors until the sands of the pit were strewn with charred corpses and the very air was thick with smoke and the smell of burning flesh. Still the spears and arrows flew. The end came when a crossbow bolt nicked one of the dragon's eyes. Half blind and maddened by dozens of lesser wounds, Dreamfire spread her wings and flew straight up at the great dome above in a last desperate attempt to break into the open sky. Already weakened by blasts of dragon flame, the dome cracked under the force of the impact, and a moment later, half of it came tumbling down, crushing both dragon and dragon slayers under tons of broken stone and rubble. The storming of the dragon pit was done. Four of the Targaryen dragons lay dead, though at a hideous cost. Yet, the shepherd was not triumphant, for the queen's own dragon remained alive and free, as the burned and bloody survivors of the carnage in the pit came stumbling from the smoke and ruin. Syrax descended on them from above.